What up, Marsh Pod? Apologies for a later release here on your hopefully great Thursday morning. Um, I am uh, on the road again, not travel for work related. Actually, I'm I'm in Tampa, Florida, because I have the lovely role of being a chaperone for uh, drunk twenty year old women and two guys for Taylor Swift tonight. So, um, fun tip for all our guys out there: don't. Don't get engaged, and uh, you won't have to do this type of thing. But that's why we're running a little late. Um, gotta gotta handle that uh, first and foremost. So appreciate the patience. A uh, good pod, I think. We'll find out when we get through it. But want to talk about Philadelphia, uh, Philadelphia Elite, a team that early on I and, and I think a couple others uh, had started to rule out, and I think that most recently we're seeing. Maybe we shouldn't have poured one out for them just yet. Or maybe we, we put a little bit more in that cup. Although the future is going to tell us, the next two weeks is going to tell us if that cup should be full or empty. They're coming off three straight wins. Beyond the Arch, Rocky Mountain, and Heartland. The Heartland one, in my opinion, the most emphatic. Uh, the Rocky Mountain one, a statement. But the performance against Heartland was was very good um, last week. They're now 4-5. and five. But they're in a really, really tough Atlantic division that's got uh, Beast of the East 8-2 and, two and, and Gotham 5-6-2 and two at the top. So there's work to be done for them. But the the writing on the wall isn't in Sharpie just yet. It appears to be in pen, and we've got the Mr. Clean out to kind of write it down or wipe it down and try to change it. Past two games, Nas Hall has scored 55 points. So Kadarius Loftus, we know he dropped 43, 12 three-pointers from a player of the week standpoint. Uh, I talked to CJ or Siege about this on our call. Maybe that's kind of already been decided, but we have to mention Nas Hall. 55 points in two games. Uh, he's eclipsed 20 points in five of his last six games. And the knock on this team early was that they didn't have the type of go-to score that you need to win big basketball games. It seems like they found him. In the game, uh, first game on Tuesday, run DMV, they... They have a big lead, and then Indy Stripes rallies back and ends up winning big themselves. The knock on that team, they don't have the guy late in the game that you turn to and say, we need a big bucket, here's the ball, go and get one. Philadelphia apparently has one, and Nas Hall has proven now over a significant portion. This isn't a blank kid kick it off with two games and look really good. This is a an elongated stretch of a really good basketball from Nas Hall. Um He's flashing playmaking upside. You know, early on in the season, through the first six games, he had just seven assists. Over the last three, he's got eight. So we're starting to see him be a, a diverse playmaker, right? The knock, we talked about it again on Tuesday, Benari James, is he more than a playmaker? Uh, or is he more than a scorer? Is he a playmaker? Nas Hall kind of, you, you you would have a decent case to make that he was just a scorer. He's proving otherwise, okay? Over the last three games, he's starting to showcase a much more well-rounded game. Meanwhile, Darian Kingy Cross has also looked surprisingly good and versatile. He's not Cooper Kingy Cross. He's not a thirty-point-per-game scorer. But what he's doing is he's filling in on the on the on the uh, kind of edges. He's filling in the cracks, right? Uh, he's had scoring nights the last three games of sixteen, eight, and ten. Those are good. Rebounding nights of 5, 11, and 8 over the last three games. Also really good, especially for the position he's playing. And then four or more assists, or actually four assists, in three of the last four games. So he's taken on a, a larger playmaking role in this in this kind of turnaround that Philadelphia has had. They dug themselves a hole. There's there's no question about that. But they're playing that like a team that could rise up. The issue is they've... At two front at the front end of the season, they just didn't take care of business in division play. When we when the league kicked off with all interdivision play, they didn't play well. Part of that's because of the division they're in. It's a really good one, right? You're gonna have Atlantis, who they beat. That's a tough win uh, that they kicked off the season with. But you look at the other uh, teams in that division. We talked about Beast of the East, uh, Gotham Five, and then Run DMV. Run DMV is not a slouch. It's still a tough out to get against Coach Myra Murray and that squad. So they kind of dug themselves a hole because they're in maybe the best division in SimWorld Hoops. They're starting to play better because they're getting out of that and they're starting to get some of those mid-tier, but in Rocky Mountain's case, a top-tier team and getting a win. So I think we're starting to see this 
this development of who they might actually be. Looking ahead, though, this is a three-game stretch coming up, that or four-game stretch that's massive. Okay, it kicks off with a game against an indie team that you have to classify as desperate. They're going to come out. They need wins because they have not been able to string them together early in the season, just like Philadelphia. They got a big one on Tuesday against Run DMV. They're playing with confidence, but they're also playing very desperately in a good way. Then they've got this brutal three-game stretch to follow. Showtime at home, Best Coast Ballers at home, and then a visit to Bay Area. They have to go at least 2-2 two and two in that stretch. Okay, They're 4-5 and five now. They have to end that stretch at 6-7 and seven to be even in consideration. If they go 1-3 and three and we see them at the end of the month sitting at 5-8, at and eight, I don't think that you can come back in the division to be a playoff team. I just don't. That division is too good. You've already given up a head-to-head win uh, to Best Coast and Gotham 5. Trying to leap those two plus SimWorld Atlantis, I don't see that happening if you don't go 2-2 two and two at least. If they can walk out of there 3-1, and one, that's huge. They can turn this thing around and be 7-6 and six and very in, in a good spot. But if, if they do anything less than that, even 2-2 two and two is a tough one. They've got to just kind of tread water. Um, they have a fighter's chance. Other than that, though, it's going to be tough. But that's not the thing. The, the story is that this is an incredible turnaround, and Nas Hall has really made a statement. That's good. We should like that. We should be happy for it. Fill the cup back up, but don't set it aside and don't leave it under the spigot because we're going to find out by the end of April if that cup needs to be emptied again. All right, y'all have a great weekend. We'll catch you then.